Hello, this is David Olani Peckham, the host and creator of Let's Talk Creatives, a podcast talk show set up to engage with the creative community across the globe. And today's special guest is Ken Wadibu. He's a conceptual artist based in Nigeria. Eva. Yeah, thank you. Same here. I'm Ken Wadibu. Uh, I'm a Nigerian visual artist. Uh, and basically, I'm here. <laughs> nice. 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 Oh, yeah. I discovered your work a couple of years ago. How did you discover it? Where? Instagram, social media. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. I've been following your work for years, man. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I didn't know. I actually thought yeah. it was from Brick Lane. That, okay, okay. No, before Brick Lane, I think we were talking Sorry? before Brick Lane. Before Brick Lane, I think we were talking we before Brick Lane. We did a write up QA for, you, for our free website. Yeah, we came to London. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, how was your? Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. So you spoke of my interns. So my interns interviewed you on my behalf. Was I couldn't make yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty ladies, though. Yeah, they did. They did. I hope. I hope they treated you well. Yeah. Yeah. They did. They did. We, 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 it was. It was really fun. Uh, and they were quite cool, yeah, really cool, yeah. yeah it, was, it was dope. It was dope. I, I, I like the interview, yeah. Oh, that's really good. So, uh, how was your experience exhibiting in London? Ah, uh, very nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was quite nervous. It, it was it was not just my first international solo show. It was my first solo show. So, yeah, so when you put that into perspective, yeah. it's like. It's like I'm not just showing yeah, yeah. to people who see my work daily. I'm showing to like a different crowd who have never experienced my work before live. So yeah, it was it was it was pretty amazing. I'm very very. I was I was pretty much tension. Well, yeah. Yeah. So it was. Quite, it must have been quite intense. Um. What you you were in London for ten days? Was it ten days? The show. No. No. no days, I was in London. You were exhibiting at the Monica. Park, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So, I, so I was I, I I was in London for almost two months. Yeah, but uh -huh. yeah, but my, my exhibition I, I had a uh, Monica um, yeah. on on say Tuesday mm. and we were meant to open Brick Lane on Wednesday. So it was like yeah. it was like two shows at once. Yeah. We were trying to yeah. plan who's gonna be here and mm. who's gonna be there. So it was, it was pretty much, it was, and we are only three, I, um, Greg, and Brad, mm. and we had to, like, find a schedule to, like, split ourselves. Well, me, it, it was good for me, because I, I could go anywhere if I wanted to. I could go to Monica today and go to Brick Lane tomorrow, so it, it, didn't, it didn't really matter for me. But for them, they had to, you know, they had to strategize everything. So it was, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was a lot of work, man. It was a lot of work. It was a lot of tension. Uh, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, I think you guys, I, I think you guys were setting up while um, uh, the interns were interviewing you. In yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they came. So we we set up briefly in the morning. Like we finished setting up in the morning. In fact, we had to rush up because we had the BBC come to for the an interview. We had your intern come to for the interview. We had on that yeah. interviewer. So everything yeah. was just. We are working and we are doing interviews and we're working. So yeah, the, BBC, yeah. the BBC aired last week and you could see in the background, you could see every, um, <laughs> my money. <manager's laughs> yeah, making some structures. And yeah, yeah. yeah. It, was, it was hectic. It was hectic. Yeah, they were telling me, obviously, yeah. like, it was, you know, super hectic or super busy. But I think yeah. the show was massive. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think you created one piece specifically uh, for the show in London. Yeah, yeah. So I, I did two pieces in London. Yeah. Um, one of them was was the pound, the pound mm. piece, right? And the other was the mother's cry. So the pound piece was already I already had an idea to do it in London. It was like 
oh, I needed to do something in London. I needed to do something that was London. So it was pound. But when I got to London, the whole narrative of the knife crime really, you know, brought me into trying to make a statement about it. So it was me trying to do the pound piece and still trying to shove in the knife crime anywhere I could, just so mm. that we could maybe, yeah, we could maybe show all about not just Africa, but London, on, on, you know, itself and blacks and diaspora. So, mm. yeah, so that was the point. Yeah, yeah, and I was super impressive, and I'm impressed by how quickly you produced the pieces. You know, it has so much detail. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you're yeah. super. Yeah, you're a prolific artist, bro. You're prolific, man. <laughs> yeah, no. I'm, 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 I'm quite fast. I'm quite you fast. I remember, fast. I remember I was working and Greg, Greg looks up to me and is like, she's going to sleep now because we, we were in the same space. So he's yeah. going to sleep now. Mm. When he wakes up, he'll probably think maybe I'll have just done like this part. But when he wakes up, I'm like, I'm like halfway done. And he's like, Oh no, man! <laughs> what did you do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the beauty, beauty about it for me is that you know a lot of artists. The reason why they take a lot of time to create works is because you know we get tired at a point. We like to just stop and you know refresh our memory, refresh our minds. But yeah. when I'm when I'm when I'm plugged in and when I'm in plugged in, when I'm on music, like time yeah. like becomes very. It's, it's complete time completely does not exist and you know all i just want to do is just work so i'm dancing i'm working i make this funny ass sound like i'm trying to sing the songs i'm listening to but it comes out very bad and it comes yeah. out very, because i remember yeah. greg telling me i sounded like a frog <laughs> so everything was it was to now it's still surreal to me you know yeah. and it was it was basically everything and more than I, than I thought it was going to be. So I really appreciate the fact that I did that. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think your super successful um, Brick Lane show was successful. It was packed out. You know, I've never yeah. seen so many people inside that space before. Like, it was really... I know. I, uh, it was crazy. We, we, have to, oh. we have to keep some people outside. Yeah. So yeah. People inside. It was, it, was, it was crazy. It was crazy. It was, it was a moment for me. Yeah. Uh, that was massive. No, congratulations, anyway, with the shows. Thanks, mate. Thanks, mate. You know, you know so, yeah. So, um, we're going to go through your work. I'm just looking for your website. And, um, yeah. actually, you know, I did spot um, uh, the, the Burner Boy on a spaceship. Yeah. I spotted, I spotted that on your Twitter account, actually. But how did that project uh, come about? Uh, okay, so um, I on the fifteen, if I'm, if, I, if, I'm, if I get the time correctly. No, on the fifteen, two hundred fourteen. I did, yeah. a, I did, a, I did a, the first work I ever did for Bonaboy. It yeah. was basically him um, with his fingers on his mouth, and then you had the smoke come out from two different angles. Yeah. So it was like why I took it upon myself to create that kind of piece was because I never seen anybody draw smoke before. It would be actually cool to create smoke and make it so real that people are like, that, that can be a drawing. And I did that and I gave and I showed him because I, I, I had links that took me to, to his house. So he yeah. saw it and he was like, oh my God, like he's never seen any drawing like this before. Mm. So I was thinking it's just like, he was just like, because for me, it was about appreciating the people who I listen to who sort of encouraged him and inspired me to want to keep working, which is probably Bonoboy, MI, and the rest. Mm -hmm. But then I'm, I'm, I'm lying down one day and, you know, someone, you know, his manager sends me a message and says, check this, this, this music video out. So it was Soke, Soke by Bonoboy. And in the song, yeah. he had my artwork like boldly placed. Ah, uh, uh, nice. So the artwork like was featured nice. from the beginning nice. to the end nice. of the song. It was that. It was that crazy. So you had the the artwork and the two people, yeah. at, uh, you know, at the background, yeah. and then you had him sitting down on a chair, mm -hmm. and you see like some some pictures clipped on the hanger, mm -hmm. right? And you could see my signature, and I was I was excited. Uh, and that was not all. 
He released the second video, another music video, the same yeah. part was featured there again. Then I, I knew that, you know, something was going to come out eventually from all that. And then, you know, the manager hit me up and said, you know, one of us working on his album cover. And I'm like, dude, I, ca I can do a sick ass album cover. Like, yeah. I don't know why nobody's ever actually putting art into their covers. And I could do that. I could create that. Mm -hmm. Right? There are some things you cannot do with pictures that art can do. For example, the Bonner Boy never had a space suit. He never had a space helmet. Yeah. But I drew on him. So that's basically the, 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 you know, the benefit of having an artist do an album cover. So yeah, that happened. And I, I was trying to make a statement too. So I didn't just want to give him like a regular small work. So I made it like almost human size, six feet large piece so that he can actually put it in his house. Yeah. And every time he's walking upstairs or walking somewhere, he looks at it and knows, holy shit, I'm the African giant. Oh, great work. How long did it take you to produce the piece? Oh, the, oh, the, the process of the piece was quite interesting. It was actually, I was, I was writing my exams, my, I think, 300 level exam or 400 level. Yeah, so it was during that time of my exam and during the same time where you know, everybody was like, dude, you need to stop working and start focusing on school because I was studying civil engineering. So you need to start focusing on school. Yeah, but I, yeah. was, I was quite really stubborn. So I, I literally go to school in the morning, read up my note, like try and revise, write my exams. Mm. Right in the afternoon, when I'm done, I come back home, rest a bit. At night, like say eight, nine, I start work. Start work to the next morning. On my way back to school, I take a nap, get to school and read. So that was that's like my routine, day in day out till I finish the cover. Yeah. Oh, that's nuts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It took almost it took almost like I think two, three weeks. Yeah. yeah. Um, I read. Yeah, I read somewhere that you left uh, civil engineering to focus on your art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was, it was a, it was a very intentional decision. All I wanted to do was do art, but all the society wanted me to do was do engineering. So I, I made a pact with myself. I said, if I could get to a, to a level, uh, uh, my art before I finish civil engineering, then I'll follow art completely. But if I can't get to that level, then a lot of pressure is going to be on me to do civil engineering and I might, and I might break eventually, right? So it became like this, my desperate, you know, approach to want to tackle art and see myself grow in art to the extent that when I finished civil engineering, it was easier for me to say, you know, civil engineering, just, you know, stay there and let me just focus on what I want to do and my dreams, which is art. So it was, it, it, it's not like I failed, it's not like I had bad grades, but you know, I want to do art. It's mm. like it's like every part of every part of my body is like watching for art. So it was yeah, it was it was a what it was worth it. The decision was worth it for me. No, no, that's good. No, that's good. Um, it was a good decision to make because you're clearly super talented, though, you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. thank you. And you, work, you work really hard, man. You work really hard, man. You work seriously, you work really hard. Um, I'm just going through the portfolio of your work. Yeah. Uh, okay, so if you could talk about the value of nothing series. So how did that project come about? Okay, so... Uh, so w w one of the things I said during the beginning of my career was to sort of just oppose or superimpose two ideas. Like, right? Something that I, I sort of just oppose a human being or the consciousness of a person or the consciousness of, um, of a group of people and put it with mm. symbols, with um, symbolic elements that define our day-to-day -day living. So I'm talking of a Dinka symbol that means certain things about life. I'm talking uh, in CBD symbol. So one of the next thing I thought of was we are all, you know, in this rush for money. There is this rush to make money, to try and, you know, clear, you know, pull ourselves in this 
high class you know population but money is a construct right it, it, you know the wealthy is it, it, it was it's sort of like it's it's not how you were born it's someone that told you that the wealthy have or or it's someone that gave you the ideology that this is a is the uh, a wealth wealthy class uh, this is a a class of wealthy people right so my aim was, you know, to bring those two together, the human consciousness, right, and awareness, and bring money together, and, you know, so, sort of just oppose them together for you to ask yourself a question, right? Do money define you? Does money define you? And in that, you know, experimentation, in that, you know, way of me trying to bring these two things together, I figured out that a lot of people connected it in the form of depression, because then you think about it. If you don't have money, that's one of the biggest form of depression in the world today, right? And you see people dying, killing themselves for money. You see people killing other people for money. Mm -hmm. And you figure out that that's a very huge topic to bring out. So it was now, you now became, uh, you now became a must for me to try and speak about these things. So I started picking all of the currency icons. I started putting faces behind them just to ask and bring that question, you know, push that question to the public. You know, does this define you? Does this represent you? So I decided to go on my Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and I decided to tell people, you know, send me comments on what you think self-worth is. Because then when you think about it, you figure out that if your self-worth is yourself and believing in yourself, then why do people get depressed with money? Right? Though... When I was reading some comments, a lot of people said money. So I put it down there. Self-worth is money to me. And, you know, yes. it also gives you that feeling that some people actually believe that their self-worth is worth in their bank account, which is ridiculous, which is weird, which is oh, crazy, oh, oh. which is what yeah, the weird Yeah. 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 So, so you figure out that the, 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 the work itself was it's sort of like an experiment to bring this idea of... Um, looking for money, hungry for money, the, 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 the push for money, the hunger for money, and then bring it into our faces to ask certain questions like, does this define you? Does this represent who you are? And if it doesn't, then why are you depressed by it? So that was, that was the, the, where the whole idea came from. Yeah, it's a powerful idea, and it's a true... The comments are a true reflection of people's minds you know so yeah yeah, so yeah. it was it, I, I i i didn't think of putting the collage at first right? yeah i just did the work and put it on on, on social media and a lot mm. of people were like oh money depresses me it does this it does this and i'm like okay lay out your what you think uh, so forth is so that i can just you know use it to make and it became interesting because a lot of people want to be part of it. A lot of people want to be part of that conversation mm -hmm. because I, I write their names so you actually know who actually writes these things mm -hmm. and you know what they represent and the kind of conversation mm -hmm. that they're trying to start. So that conversation was what well bet the value of matters. Yeah, There's a very powerful, strong uh, message behind that. You know, so really, yeah, congratulations for that.